active participant in our conversation so far and a um, I can't keep my mouth shut, so, yeah. And a tremendous thought leader on the housing issue. We're very grateful to have her back in the Bay Area and leading on this incredibly important issue. Um, and she's here today just to present one of her many research avenues, um, which will be helpful at explaining why housing is such a problem. Great, thank you. And I know we're way over time. I'm going to cut this into as short a period of time. Um, as I can, um, but what I wanted to say to start with is this conversation we were just having about Sacramento and what's in your packet about the federal government is the reason why um, I am not focusing all of my uh, policy uh, research on uh, relying on the state or federal or local governments to save us because they are clearly not going to do that. So we just put out this paper. Um, it's on our website. I've brought some copies if uh, people would like to see it. And um, to also uh, just, I'm going to skip through our uh, mission of the uh, Turner Center for Housing Innovation uh, and to just say that you know we focus on a number of areas. And this, uh, what to do about how to lower the cost of development uh, and do it faster. Uh, this idea of building housing uh, off-site in a factory and bringing it to the site uh, as much of it as possible uh, is this kind of private sector innovation that I uh, believe uh, this time has come and that we have to focus on how to uh, figure out how to make it work. So this paper uh, is really about uh, why should we do this? What are the benefits and what are the challenges of ramping up uh, off-site construction? And what are some ideas about um, how we might be able to do that? So um, the chart that I just think I would really draw your attention to is the McKinsey chart on the right, which just shows that productivity of, the, of labor, and I don't mean labor, I mean productivity in general in the sector of construction is like down here in the, you know, no, nowhere man's land where productivity in all other sectors, all other industries, you know, keeps getting better over time. So construction, oh, sorry for those who are in construction, yeah. is just way behind and so we really, you know, need to ramp that up. That's, that's the bottom line of what we're looking at. So, uh, this work actually started literally with a kickoff about a year ago with um, a number of folks around the table here, but it was co-sponsored between the Bay Area Council and the Turner Center, and all of these folks uh, were, were part of that round table. We then followed up with um, factory representatives. I think I've visited now five uh, off-site construction factories on the West Coast. Uh, I was saying to someone, my next stop is Sweden, where 85% of all uh, multifamily uh, construction is done in a factory because their building season is so short that if you're going to get anything built, you better figure out uh, how to build it uh, off-site so that you know necessity is the mother of invention. Well, I think we're kind of running into the same thing for different reasons here uh, in, the, in the Bay Area. So really what we know by talking to um, all of you and factory representatives, developers, is you really can save 20% on the hard cost of construction and you can really save 40 to 50% of the time. And how much time you save depends on your site and the structure of your, um, your design and your, um, your project. But this is really possible and I think all the developers and contractors uh, in the room uh, understand that. Um, uh, other benefits that I just want to point out, and this is my favorite uh, picture in the whole presentation, is uh, there's a lot of other benefits besides the construction savings and the time savings. A lot of those around labor. So one of the big issues you have for construction costs going up is we actually have a shortage of labor. And uh, this off-site construction actually opens up your labor pool significantly. It's much less skilled workers need it when all you have to do is you know, follow the widget. Uh, it also uh, opens up the labor force in a big way to uh, non-traditional construction workers, including women. So I visited this factory in Arizona, 40% of their workforce is women. 
And I just think that's important because we don't have enough construction workers and we're going to have to expand our labor pool uh, to get them. It's also better for the workforce. Um, they're working under a roof. They're working, you know, 24-7 days uh, or 365 days a year. They're uh, not uh, subject to weather delays and not working for, uh, how long do we have rain in the Bay Area here recently? Sure. Three weeks at a time. And so these folks aren't working. Well, if you're in a factory, you know, you may be making a somewhat less wage than you would make if you were an on-site worker, but you're making it 365 days a year, or, you know, whatever, minus 14 holidays. A um, lot better uh, integration of uh, uh, technology is possible when you're doing it off-site. And my big aha the first time I went onto a site where uh, a crane was dropping a module uh, is you can hear a pin drop on this construction site. There are no workers' cars. There are no noise. There's no compression you know, machinery running, and uh, it's a much better work environment for the neighborhoods uh, that we're, we're building in uh, if, if you do um, do it off-site. Is this workforce typically unionized or not, or somewhere in between? So that's a great question. I would say generally it is not unionized, uh, except uh, there are cases where, um, for example, uh, the Zeta factory had a, which uh, didn't make it, but they had a uh, agreement with the um, uh, uh, Carpenters Union, and uh, that, I would say, probably, if you're going to do this in the Bay Area, would be a big benefit to doing a factory in the Bay Area in terms of being able to um, buy a piece with the unions by having on-site um, workers or workers in the factory site unionized. I, I will say that I think the way you think about this is just like you think about uh, the United Auto Workers, right? So somebody said to me, if you had built a car with a windshield wipers union and a tire union and an engine union, like, you know, you never would have been able to uh, automate uh, manufacture a car, but it was United Auto Workers. So I think the way we need to think about uh, labor in a factory is United Housing Workers. It's, a, it's, you know, they're a housing assembler. It's a new classification of a union. Now I think you can sign with the Carpenters Union, but you know, think about it in that uh, way. And I, and I will say for those San Francisco folks, you know, San Francisco's really, really interested in having a factory in San Francisco. They are trying to bring in all the unions to the table uh, to try to you know, get agreement. I don't think that's gonna work. I, I think you have to sign with carpenters, make it, you know, come up with a new uh, classification, and, and that's your kind of compromise in how to make this work. The one other example I'll use is when I first looked at uh, taking over a public housing project in San Francisco at North Beach, they said, well, that's great. We want you to use our janitors, uh, uh, our workforce. And I said, okay, so let's you know, look at what they make. And well, there was no maintenance classification. So you needed a drywaller or a carpenter or an electrician to, to turn a unit. So you can't have that in a factory. And that's gotta be, we'll, we'll never make it work if you go in that direction. But I do think you can go in uh, the direction of um, having a unionized workforce, which would be uh, positive. Um, so uh, lots of benefits. Uh, there are challenges. And anyone in, around this table who has tried it will understand those challenges. I think the first is in design and uh, material selection and timing um, of all of that. Uh, there have been problems in the developments that have been done in the Bay Area about the factory actually delivering as scheduled and on time and not having gaps in delivery of the modules. Um, and there's been some code and regulatory issue fights between local code officials and the state, which is actually uh, the one that uh, certifies the work uh, for, for modules. Um, <clears throat> My view is all those are, can be worked out, and I'm not going to go into detail, although I do in the paper some examples about 
uh, how you work those uh, issues out. The other challenges are in the business model itself, and I would put this as a, a, a mismatch between developer contractor needs and typical manufacturer needs. Uh, they need money up front to order all their materials to get it out of the factory to create uh, the module. Construction lenders aren't used to um, playing that way, and so uh, you know, working working out those differences, uh, which I think is coming with experience, uh, is is a major issue. And then for the factory, uh, there are real issues around pipeline. Um, how do they keep uh, their workers going? You now have all your workers on one payroll, not on the sub, not on the plumbers, the general contractors, the electrician, right? Not on all the different payrolls. And so if you have a slowdown right now, that pain is diffuse. Uh, in a factory, that pain hits the factory and all their capital and all their equipment and all their workforce all at the same time. So it's really important that a factory has a stable pipeline. So, um, how do we solve for this? This is the end because I do believe this is happening. Um, I will tell you there are at least five startups in the Bay Area, Seattle, Arizona uh, that are all trying to do this. Uh, and these, these don't count the ones that have already tried and failed. So I think there's some folks that were in early and you know maybe they were in you know, it's like the pioneers with the arrows in their back. They, they tried, they tried valiantly. Uh, but they couldn't work through these issues. Uh, but there's a lot of new folks that are trying to make this happen, and there is capital that I think wants to, you know, really see this uh, scale. And um, so, so my view is really it's a coming together of traditional development and manufacturing facilities that we just have not seen yet. And uh, on the factory side, I think the biggest thing that would help is if you look at a group uh, who wants to do this, so look at the five that are out there, and look at a team that has uh, ownership of the factory and management talent in the factory that has actually worked in the traditional multifamily development, contracting, and design world. And if you look at most of the folks who failed, they didn't have that. Right? They came from manufacturing um, mobile homes, or they came from manufacturing electronics, uh, but they don't understand uh, our business. And I think there are some folks who understand our business who are trying to do this, and I think it's a, a huge benefit, and right now a missing uh, piece. Uh, I also think, uh, and I think most of the folks who are looking at this are thinking about it, you need some pipeline diversity. You can't just rely on multifamily rental housing because guess what, you know, there's cycles. Uh, but if you think about this for the Bay Area, we have a huge student housing problem, uh, all kinds of other uh, diversification that could still come off the same factory lines if you need um, additional work for cyclical uh, purposes. And the last I would say is um, there has been a, a huge distrust. There's no other way for me to put it when I go and talk to people on both sides of the spectrum. Uh, developers and contractors don't trust that the folks in the manufacturing, and kind of goes back to the first point, understand their business and understand what their needs are. And I think if you uh, find a relationship where you can establish that, um, and the values point kind of goes to the Bay Area values, like you know we're, we're going to have to deal with labor, um, and uh, that we can make this happen. On the on the on the development side, uh, I will just say this: uh, we got to get over this issue that uh, you, you got to design this to. B for off-site construction from day one. You've got to commit to it, and you've got to have your designers and your planning approvals. You've got to think about this day one, and I think we need the development community to start shifting the way they think about um, doing development if and, and, and commit to uh, really looking at an off-site uh, process uh, from the get-go. and. Uh, 
refine, I would say, or train our lenders to, uh, I've got some recommendations of how lenders could get comfortable with all the collateral being in the factory. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think you could get them there. You're starting to see more than, more than one, uh, three or four that are willing to, to do this um, after experience. So my, um, oops, oh, doesn't matter. Uh, the last point I was just going to make is I really do believe this is going to happen. And I really do believe that this is kind of like Uber and the taxi industry. We either need to figure out as a development community how to work with this off-site factory kind of situation, or I really think there's a group that's going to come together, or groups, multiple groups. There's going to be an Uber and a Lyft, and they're going to put some of the folks in this room out of business. And so we either need to figure out how to work this together or get run over. Absolutely agree. Well done. Thank you, Thank you very much. I'll give you one example of, uh, I think you probably know it.